The smell of dirty socks can be linked to your captain not changing socks for one week or can be related to Dear guests, welcome back to the channel. Today, let us talk about odours. Dear guests, welcome back to the channel. Today, let us talk about managing smoke and fumes and odours. First, let us open the IKO dictionary and look at the definition of smoke, fumes and odour. So, according to IKO, smoke is defined as the product of burning materials made visible by the presence of small particles. If you see it with your own eyes, that's smoke. Fumes, on the other hand, is not visible, you can't see it. So, the proper definition for it is gaseous compounds which are not visible. Visible. Now, for odour, it is defined as a particular smell, especially an unpleasant one, but not necessarily toxic, like a fart or rotten eggs. So, smoke, fumes and odour. Something you can see, something you cannot see, and something that smells. Some history for you. In 2005, all the association regulatory bodies, airlines and manufacturers gather around in a fire. <laughs> Just kidding. Come together and discuss and came up with a common template one single checklist template. Before this, we had avionics smoke checklist, aircon smoke checklist, and cabin equipment and smoke checklist. Three separate checklists. So they decided to combine all three into one single checklist. This was because of the feedback that they get from airlines and past events where there was loss of time in choosing the right checklist. So if there is only one checklist, there is no confusion and also pilots can carry out immediate actions right from the beginning of the event. The FAA authorities also came out with an advisory circular that clearly highlighted that fumes may be one of your first indications of an impending fire and to always identify the source of the strange odour as soon as possible. As long as you are not completely sure where is the odour is coming from, apply the smoke procedure. A smoke event is a multi-layered and ever-changing situation, multi-layered because first you don't know what the hell is happening at the same time you have to be quick to analyze and take action and manage the situation and it is ever changing because the problem may become bigger if some initial actions are not taken first so what are your main challenges number one is time number two is establishing communication with the cabin crew and number three is to identify where is the smoke fumes or odor source. And because of this, the smoke checklist in the QRH will be able to solve these three challenges. The FAA came up with an advisory circular stating two important statements which are a fire may be uncontrollable within 8 to 10 minutes and the second statement the crew may have less than 15 minutes to land the aircraft. They have done the test and said hey bro, land ASAP. Talking between the pilots and cabin crew is important because the event is so dynamic that we need to know about the progress of the event. Identification of the source, it can be dead, 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 dead. Out of all these potential sources of smoke, these four sources, either from the avionics bay, air conditioning, cabin equipment, electrical stuff, it is quite a challenge to locate and to be confirmed. That is why the checklist has troubleshooting steps for us to determine where is the source. So once you open the checklist immediately in your mind, you have to anticipate a diversion. Then there are a few initial steps that you have to apply immediately. Use your oxygen mask, van blower override, extract override, cabin fans off, galley and cabin off, signs on and establish communication with the cabin crew. This vital few steps is to number one, stop the smoke or fumes from circulating and number two, ensure pilot's protection and establish communication. Number three, these steps are simple and can be done quickly and most importantly, it is also reversible. My late grandfather once told me that the most important thing in life is contribution and so, to be a net positive to society, I have decided to step up my game and bring more value to this community. Air Boss is a magazine created by pilots for pilots which will give you air accident analysis, latest aviation news and potential job opportunities and more. Click on the join button on this channel to get the virgin edition of Air Boss 1 and email me at captain.sq.a320 at gmail.com. Thank you and now back to the video. So what you want to do is to be diversion minded. First question you ask yourself is 
is the smoke source immediately obvious, accessible, and extinguishable? If yes, isolate it. If not, divert. Remember that our cabin crew plays a vital role in identifying where is the smoke source. At places where it is not equipped with sensors, the cabin crew have to rely on their five sensors. Let us talk about odors and how they smell like. Although our nose is not IKO certified, our sense of smell is vital in identifying the culprit. So don't lose your smell. So acrid odors, something bitter or pungent is linked to the electrical equipment, your in-flight entertainment system or the engine oil leak. A burning odor can be linked to electrical equipment, galley equipment, burn sausage or even bird ingestion. Now we know what's for dinner. Chemical odors are linked to contaminated bleed air or APU ingestion and chlorine smell is linked to smoke hood or block door area drain. Electrical smell is of course electrical equipment. The smell of dirty socks can be linked to your captain not changing socks for one week or can be related to APU or engine oil leaks. Foul smells can be linked to the toilets and fuel and oil smell can be linked to the APU or engine. And Skydraw smell is linked to engine hydraulics. It's hard to describe over video, but Skydraw is a bit pungent. So ask your engineer. Speaking of APU odor, that reminds me during preliminary cockpit preparation, Airbus recommends to switch on the APU bleed once the APU is turned on. But there might be some odor in the cabin due to some oil traces in the APU air duct. And so, to avoid that, you can select APU bleed after 3 minutes from the APU start. This warm-up time will ensure that the seals are working optimally and thus eliminate all traces in the APU air duct. Also, during parking, Airbus recommends that you set the APU bleed to on just before engine shutdown to minimize the odors. But sometimes you can still smell it depending on the environment. So you can switch on the APU bleed after engine shutdown depending on your airline but this will make the number of pack starting cycles increase and also bear in mind that by doing this APU bleed will not be immediately available in case of any engine tailpipe fire. 